thank God uh, for the privilege to be before his people because whatever is done is going to be done by him and not by me. I want to get out the way and let the Lord have his way. I had a, a topic uh, that we're more than conquerors, but I just really want to encourage the saints to think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for us. We're going to go to Romans 8, start at 28. I like it when we can converse back and forth, but I don't know if anyone's going to be feeling that today. That's Romans 8, 28. I can see a little better now. <laughs> Reads, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. That said a lot right there. Said a lot. We are called according to his purpose. We have to love God. Then we will call on him. In Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, it says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. There's a lot of controversy about these, these first three scriptures I'm going to read. God called us before the world began. He called everybody. He didn't just pick one or two people. Now, we know at times in the Bible, the Lord would get certain ones to do a certain job. But he made the call to all mankind. So it's, it's according to his purpose that he's called us. That's right. In Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. So he made the call, and then we had to turn around and respond. We had to echo because if we didn't echo, then we didn't hear that call. Because he made that call before we were formed in our, our mother's belly. He knows our name. He knew our name before we even got a name. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he's saying, and we know. The point here is to know. We have the privilege to know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's not something we think or something somebody told us. If we read this word ourselves, we know that these things work together for the good. Hallelujah. This verse doesn't just apply to when we first believed in the Lord and got saved. It looks at how that we can constantly, continually calling on his name, being made more like he wants us to be. The practice, this practice is essential for a Christian's life. We have to call on the Lord. We don't get him once and we've, we've arrived. No way. No way. It's a continuation. This life has to be made and molded. We have to be changed. We're, we're rotten. We're old. We're dirty. And each and every day, never think of yourself more than you ought because you're nothing. You're nothing without Jesus because he said in him, we move, we live, we move, and we have our being. Without him, we're nothing. Without him, we can't make it. And, and the, the encouraging thing about it is it's true. It's not something I'm saying. It's something that the word is saying. And we're supposed to grab hold to this and hold on to it because he, makes, he made a way. For us and he makes a way for us so when you get stuck and you sitting and I know I've been there you sitting you kind of stuck in a little hole a little lull there somewhere and you're just like Lord what's going on where am I going what am I doing just get back in the word and start seeking him and he'll bring you out he'll bring you out and then or he'll send somebody by 
They'll say something. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that word. Amen. Uh, the sister, uh, Betty, she was teaching and she was talking about uh, fasting uh, uh, things like TV. That's one of the things that I have to fast against because you can get caught in it and sit there and watch it and you're just lost. I mean, you're just, just there. It's not, it doesn't serve any really good purpose. The news is the news and the news is the news. The same, the news is every, every day is the same news. <laughs> That news is coming out. So it's, it's just redundant. Redundant, that's right. In, in the 29th verse it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus came first. He went through it first. And that lets us know if we follow him, we're going to go through what he goes through. We're going to go through something. It may not be like the other guys. It may not even be as harsh as the other guys, but we're going to go through something to get to where we should be. We have to be made and molded. In Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2.19, it tells us, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look out. What seal? He's saying we have a seal. What is that seal? The Holy Ghost. That's the seal. That seal spreads abroad. That seal shows Jesus. That seal shows us where we should go, leads us and guides us and takes us through things day by day. You know, it's sometime uh, we come to a road and you have to say, okay, Lord, which way to go? Which way do I go? What do I do? Because sometimes we think we know, but we don't. I have a lot of stuff going on today. <laughs> So we have a seal, we have a promise from God that we'll make it. He says in the 30th verse, moreover, whom he did predestinate, this is Romans uh, 8 and 30, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, hmm, them he also glorified. I'm glorified? He set me in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, glorified, justified. He changed that thing. He acquitted us. We went to court and he was the, the lawyer. And he got us out of that stink. He took us up and took us out only by his grace. Only by his grace. Hallelujah. He wants us to remember that. You've been set free. Hallelujah according to his will and his purpose. Hallelujah. And let's, uh, in 1 John 2 and 2, tells you a little bit more about what he did for us. And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is why we've been chosen to tell the world about the goodness of the Lord. A lot of people think that if you predestinated then why should I try and do anything? Because if you chosen and he didn't choose me, then why am I even trying? No. The whole world. He died for the whole world. He made a way for the whole world. He wants everybody to come to repentance. He wants everybody to receive salvation. But the problem is mankind. God's not the problem. He didn't pick and choose and say, you're no good, I'm not getting you. You're okay, I'm going to take you. He didn't do that. He called everybody, the whole world. There's no excuse here. You make a choice, one way or the other. Hallelujah. He said, he said over in uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 19, 
I want to read a little something to you, then go back into here. He says, I called heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, you shall choose. Now look at what he's saying. He's, he's opening up the way. He's sitting you in the pocket, taking you out of your world, the, the world of sin, and saying, choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. We're responsible for a lot of people. Our life is responsible for our children, our children's children, their children, our nieces, our nephews, our cousins, our siblings. We're responsible. Hallelujah. We have to choose life because he lives. He's alive. He died, but he's alive now. And he's alive in us. The ministry that Christ did on the cross was intended for all. God repeatedly says, whosoever believeth in him can obtain salvation. To come to Christ is an invitation to all who hear the gospel. They are responsible without excuse. Either you accept him or you reject him. You hear this word, come running. It's like they had that bell, that cowbell or that triangle when, when it was time for supper. And when they ring it, you come running. When the word comes out, you come running, hallelujah, to get hold to what's good, what's kind, what's real, hallelujah, what makes a change. Without it, we can't make it, hallelujah, hallelujah. He, 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 he's God. And he loved us loved and loves us so much that he constantly makes intercession. He constantly goes before for us. It's not, well, today I guess the Lord's not going to pray, not going to make intercession for me. No, constantly, constantly. He loves us people, and we need to recognize the fact that he does love us and that he died because he loves us, and he lives to let us know that we are changed, we are new, we are different, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and that are the called according to his purpose. We, we have a, oh, this is great. It's a great opportunity. Every time we get up, every day we wake up, Every day we can breathe and we can talk and we can walk and we can move our bodies and we can just say, how you doing? It's an opportunity to do something for the Lord. The, the devil will try and trick you and tell you, uh, you ain't no good. God don't need you. God can use anybody he wants to use to do anything he wants to get done. And we might as well get in line and say, okay, Lord, me, 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 next. But sometimes it's the same thing with me. I'll sit down and say, well, I'm going to let Sister So-and-So do that because I'm going to sit here and, and ride on the coattail right here for a little while. But no, we must be ready to tell the world about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to go down to uh, the 31st verse. Hallelujah. It says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, it gets serious now. It gets serious. The devil wants to let you know that you're not about nothing, that you don't mean nothing, that you never was nothing, but he's a liar. He's an accuser of the brethren. He is someone that comes to mock you and keep you in a little spot where you won't move, where you'll be fearful. But he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That's the spirit he gave us. The Holy Ghost. It's powerful. But if we don't use it, it'll, he'll just sit there. He's not going to make you. He don't push you. 
He don't kick you. He don't put a chain on you and pull you. You have to get up and be willing to be about God's business. In Psalms 118 and 6, just a little more encouragement about how God works. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Unto me. What can he do? The most a man can do to you is take your life. And so what? That's a hard thing to say when it's, when it's fear come up on you, when somebody's coming to kill you or take your life away. But if you're in God where you should be, that's all he can do. But then that makes you go where you want to be with Christ. It's not that we're trying to die, but man can actually take our lives. But many of the, the people before us, their lives were taken, but they had finished their course. They had kept the faith. They did the will of God. So it was no problem. It's not a problem. But see, our fear is not so much as somebody taking our life. Our fear is the faces of man. We're concerned about what they think, about how they feel about us, or how they're going to accept us, or what are they going to do with what I have to say. Sure, that comes out. But that shouldn't be your worry. The worry, you shouldn't have a worry, not like that. The thing you should contend for or work towards is, Lord, use me. Lord, have your way. Lord, let your will be done. Let what be said come from you and not me. Amen. In the 32nd verse, it says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely, freely give us all things? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Everything that we need, God has. Everything that we need, we can ask God for. We found out even in prayer, you can ask God for things and he'll answer it. You may not see it today. You may not see it tomorrow. But then sometimes you see it the next day. And it blows your mind. And you're like, did he really do that already? <laughs> I just said that. Lord, thank you. So our responsibility is to thank him and to praise him and to magnify him and to glorify him and to exalt him in our lives, that man can see God through us. I remember when I first saw God, I actually saw a lady sitting on the other side of a building. I went to get my tires on my car at a Goodyear place in, in uh, Los Angeles, California. And I saw this light over this lady. And that thing intrigued me, so I had to go up and ask her, who was she? And why was she shining like that so? This lady witnessed to me, 1977, and she told me about the goodness of the Lord. The thing that got my attention was she said that God can forgive you of all the sins you've committed. That thing blew my mind. I was like, oh, my God, I got to get this God. I got to find out where he is because I was telling people, this lady told me a whole bunch of stuff about God, and I've never heard it before. But that's what we're here for, for people to see that light in us. Hallelujah. For people to come and ask us, what is it about you? Is something different about you? I don't understand. Help me understand. Hallelujah. And that's, that's how simple it is. It's simplistic. It's not hard, but we make it hard. Because we're trying to do something that God's already done. It's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done. He says that in Romans 5 and 6, hallelujah, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. 
He died for us. He died for rotten, no good me. I was just a dust ball. Still a dust ball. Shaking it off. Shaking it off. Shaking it off. Day by day. Hallelujah. Becoming more of what Christ wants me to be. Yet people may not see it. People you know in your life, they know you. They figure they know all about you and that you're the same old person, but not so. God changes you. He rearranges you. He molds you. Hallelujah. He makes you to look different. I look in the mirror and I see somebody different. I hear somebody different. I don't hear that old person anymore. That person is gone. Gone. Hallelujah. God, he, it says here in, in the 10th verse, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We're saved because he lived. He died. He literally died. He gave up the ghost. He left that body. And then he came and got back in that body. That's why we can live. Because we died in the similitude of the way he did. We died to sin. We went into baptism. We was, were washed by the blood of the Lamb. We were cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. That we could, hallelujah, be made new by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. We are new creature, creation. We are new creatures. We are, hallelujah, not what we used to be. Hallelujah. But thank God we're moving on to what God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Over in Romans 4 and 25, he says, Who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification. We're justified. And we can boldly say that to another person. I'm justified. I'm changed. I've been saved. Hallelujah. I've been taken out of the muck and the marry clay. I've been shaped into a new creature. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I love him because he loved me. And that love that he gave us is what he's coming back for. Hallelujah. We need to grab hold of that love and keep it. Hallelujah. In our hearts and in our mind. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, saints. We have a new day coming. Hallelujah. A new day. He's sending down the Holy Ghost constantly. He's refilling us constantly as long as we call on him. As long as we ask him to do so, he will do this for us. In the 33rd verse, Romans 8, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Look out. Hallelujah. Isaiah said in Isaiah 50 and 8 and 9, he said, he is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near me. Bold. He was bold. He who justifies me is near. He's in the air. He's in the atmosphere as it was brought out. He's sitting right next to me. He's hovering over me. He's covering me. He's shielding me. He's sheltering me. He's the one that justified. I didn't justify myself. There's no way I could have. No way, no how. I can't even justify myself to mankind because they're going to see what they see and hear what they hear. All I have to do is know that I'm pleasing to God, that, I'm, that he's pleased with me. Hallelujah. Then and then only will I be on my way. I'll be heaven bound. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. 
He said in the 34th verse, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Several places in the Bible, he's making intercession. He's making intercession. That's why we can say, we know that all these things work together for the good. He is making the way for us. He's calling out. He's knocking down devils. He's stomping them down. And then we just put our feet on them. And we just walk on by into the love of God. It's love. Saints, it's love. This is what we're to be like, love. And that's, people say, how can you be like love? Because he is love. That's what he gave us, his love. Hallelujah. And that's the only way out of this situation is through love. Hallelujah. In uh, Hebrews 7.25, he says, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. God lives for us. He lives to make a way for us. Hallelujah. He's never going to go to a cross again. He did that once and for all, that we could come into salvation. Hallelujah. So if we seek him, seek him as never before, that we can know and understand that because of his death, burial, and resurrection, we are able to see clearly now. We are able to see clearly. He says in the 36th verse, where did I miss? Oh, 35th. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I'm going to read you something in 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. It says, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. This is how we show forth Christ when that old man died, when he sloughed up, when the way I see it is gone, when the way I think is gone, but when the way Jesus says is alive. This is when we become more like Christ. When the will of the Lord is working, it's bright, it's shining, man can see it, and there's no doubt in your mind that you're walking uprightly before the one and only living God. Amen. He says in the 37th verse, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. We have been conquered by the word of God. We take the word of God and we conquer the things in our life. We overcome with the word of God. Without it, we can't make it. Without it, we can't even think straight. Without it, we can't even get up and go and do anything without the word of God. We need it. We, we need to search it. We need to dig into it. We need to make it come alive. It comes up off the paper and it comes into our lives. Hallelujah. That we can share it with someone else. Amen. He says, for I am persuaded. No, I'm going to go to 1 John 4 and 4. Tell you a little bit about what God is saying to us about the conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world. Amen. 1 John 5 and 4, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. It's impossible to please him without faith. We have to have faith that whatever the word says is true and that it'll come to pass, that it'll come to fruition, that we can use it in our arsenal, that we can repeat the word of God and it'll defend us. It'll reflect the devil. It'll kick him off because we fight against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. This is why he said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. It, in, in Ephesians 6 and 12, it tells you a little bit about what we wrestle against. This is a constant fight. It's a daily fight. Hallelujah. As long as we have breath in our bodies, we're going to fight this fight. Hallelujah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These people are in our government. These spiritual wickedness is in our, the schools, it's in our jobs, it's everywhere we go. It can even be in the, the grocery store, the supermarket. So we have to go in with our armor on, ready to fight, hallelujah, against these principalities, ready to recognize the fact that none of this can separate us from the love of God. Love is what brought us Love is what keeps us. Love is what saves us. Love. Jesus is love. And we are more than conquerors in that love. Amen. Amen.